Hi everyone and welcome to Club 3 episode 6 of Rolling in the Isles, an FM22 British Isles Journeyman series with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, we've reached a really, really big day in the JD Cymru North Welsh League. First versus second, my Colwyn Bay side take on an ever-improving Kefin Druids, who are favourites for the title this season. And there's three points separating us at the top of the table from them. Can we stay there at the end of the day? On top? Let's find out. Welcome back to Colwyn Bay. So those that were with me in last episode will remember we had a five point gap at the top of the table and I really desperately wanted to try and keep it that way leading into this match to give us a cushion to play Kefin Druids. We haven't quite got that. There were one or two hiccups along the way between last episode and this one, but we do have a three point gap and a couple of goals um, advantage in the goals um, difference column as well. My mind went blank for a second then. But yeah, the goal difference, we've got a two goal advantage. So it's not too bad. Of course, if they beat us today, they'll equal us on points and that goal difference will change in their favour. So anything can happen. Can we remain top of the table after today's match? That is the big question of the episode. But before that, we've just reached February. We've had a January transfer window and I did actually do quite a bit of business in the end. Let's go check it all out. So at first glance, it basically looks like I bought a ton of players in and didn't let anybody go from the squad and it's now a bit imbalanced. That's not actually strictly true. What I ended up doing was moving a couple of players down to our under 19s because I thought that they weren't quite up to the standard that I needed them to be. I released one player and also I think a couple left to go to other clubs because their contracts had expired as well. So they don't all show up in the same way in the transfers column. So there were about two, three, four, five players maybe that went out and we bought five of these seven players in at this point. Uh, Grogan and Thompson were earlier acquisitions in the previous summer transfer window. So from Spruce downwards, we've got five players to look through. I've taken a couple from Kefin Druids, one, uh, two from Carmarthen and one from Hlanelli, uh, Hlanefli Town. Um, and so all Welsh um, clubs. And I kind of thought it was a good idea if I could to take a couple from Kefin Druids, if I can, just because I thought because they'd been relegated into our division, they might have one or two that are slightly better than what we've got. If I could prize them out, maybe that was a good thing. Ultimately, whether or not I've done that, time will tell. But let's go through these. So the first up, James Pruce, uh, Spruce, sorry, in, on a free transfer from Kevin, uh, Kevin Druids. If we click in on him, he's a striker. It's one that I needed, I felt. I felt I had a couple of okay strikers. And obviously, this guy's got a huge amount of gaps around his attributes because that's the sort of standard that we're looking at all the way through all of these players. But 13 in finishing, a little bit of dribbling and first touch in there. Determination is good. Off the ball is reasonable. Pace and acceleration are decent um, at this level. So ultimately, I think he's going to be okay for us. Played a couple of games, not really got going yet, but uh, he'll find himself on the bench for today's game against his old team. Maybe he can come on and cause them a problem. Who knows? So that's the first one through the door. The next one is George Scott. George Scott comes in because I felt like Woodford in midfield didn't have a particularly fantastic partner. I think uh, the uh, Mitsala role is well taken care of. The, the Carolero type uh, holding player type role I felt could be improved on a bit. And the reason this guy is the one I chose is that the guy that we've been playing in that role up until now uh, I'd got about a seven or eight in tackling, but only like a six or seven in passing as well. And the rest of it wasn't particularly spectacular. This guy's got an 11 in passing, 10 in vision, could be a little bit more, but his work rate is really high. And there's the big plus of it all. Fitness is fantastic. Pace is it's fantastic. Uh, acceleration is amazing as well and so is agility. This guy can get round the pitch for us. Stamina could be a little bit higher, but other than that, 
I think this guy will do a really good job for us. Played a couple of games for us um, already, I think. Uh, let's have a look and see what he's been up to so far. Uh, he's played one game for us so far. And look at that, 7.6 average rating from it. I think this guy is a decent acquisition. And he was playing for Kevin Druids. We nabbed him and there's not much they could do about it because it was on a free transfer. So George Scott into the building. Gareth Davies is another one uh, that came through the door. Another Davies. There's lots of them in Wales and we've got about three or four in our squad now. Uh, central defensive cover. Uh, whether or not he'll play... Uh, Early on, I'm not 100% sure because he's um, only quite young at the moment, uh, 19 years old. But I think he's uh, probably pushing to be better than most of what we've got already. And he will get his chances. And the big plus about him, there's no you know sugarcoating it. He's got 14 tackling, 16 bravery, good natural um, fitness. Jumping reach is decent, although his heading could be slightly better. Um, at six foot one, he's a reasonably good height, and I think he'll do a decent job for us. There is a lot going on here that's not fantastic, but um, compared to most of our other defenders, he's pretty decent. Uh, the fourth of our five is the first of two fullbacks, one on the left and one on the right. And Joshua Bailey comes in from Llanefli Town and he can play down the left-hand side. I was looking for a little bit more stability in my fullbacks. Uh, again, this is nothing to write home about, but it's better than what we had. And the reason it's better than what we had is because his tackling is at 12. Uh, his determination and decisions are good. His physicals are not fantastic, but at least he's got a little bit of pace and some good natural finishing. Uh, not natural finishing, natural fitness. Uh, and so ultimately, he can do a, a, a job for us that's going to be worth it, I think, considering that that is significantly better still than what we had previously. And the last one is the very same sort of situation that we're in. Um, we've got a right-sided fullback who in star ratings looks better than what we've got. And in attributes, you can see that it's consistent in the key attributes of around 9, 10, 11, sometimes up to 12 and 13 in some other um, worthwhile attributes to have. And he's not amazing, but he's better than what we had. And so we've uh, I've spent the, the winter window trying to do that, trying to improve the squad more than the first team even, just to get some depth so we can rotate a little bit. Uh, I was working off a 23-man squad up till this point. I've upped it to 25 in terms of who's moved out and who's come in. And so ultimately, I feel like we're in a better position for this second half of the season than we were in the first half. And that's pretty much, in a transfer window, all you can ask for. So there you go. Dealing's done. And we move on to that amazingly big, important match against Kevin Druids. So we do have one or two personnel issues today. Unfortunately, just at the point where we reached our biggest game of the season, we've got two key players out and they're both down the right hand side. Uh, our new right fullback, Ryan George, is out because he picked up a yellow card for us and that was his fifth of the season, so he's suspended. And we also have Brad Jackson, our right winger, out because he got sent off in our last game. Uh, I'll show you the fixtures uh, in a second. I just realised I haven't done that so far uh, as to where we've been recently. But he got sent off in the last game and that means that he can't play today either. So along with those two being out and a couple of newbies in and around the squad, um, you can see that we are in a slightly different position than where we have been recently in terms of what that first team looks like. Let's just quickly nip into the schedule. My mistake to not have shown you this before. So since Hlangefni, uh, where we won 3-0 in the last episode, we've had three games since through that January transfer window. Uh, Holyhead, we got a nil-nil draw away from home. Wasn't a great performance particularly. It was a very nothingy game. Uh, but we sorted that out afterwards with a couple of wins. Uh, one against Portsmouth Dog and one uh, against Ho uh, Holy Well rather than Holyhead. 
Uh, 2-1 over Holywell in the last outing. So not too bad. A couple of good wins in there. That's kept us at the top of the table. But that draw against Holyhead really did uh, enable Kevin Druids to narrow the gap again. And they have done so. They could do so further today if we don't get this one right. So big match. Let's see how we get on for that. We're going in with Coughlin in goal. Davies at right back. Ellison at left back. Grogan and Gill in central defence. Scott and Woodford in central midfield. With Summers on the right. Gammond on the left. Howell and Davies up top. With a bench of Davies, Bailey, Thompson, Wood, Smothers, Thompson and Spruce. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. <laughs> So the early team talk is all about positivity, really. I've pumped the fists, riled up the players as much as I can, telling them we've been on a really fantastic run recently, and I do expect them to try and keep that going as much as is possible. We are at home, which really does help us on such a big occasion. Can we find a way to stop the juggernaut that is Kevin Druids. Now, at the very beginning of the season, we saw that they were odds-on favourites, about t 9 or 10 to 1 odds-on to win this division, and they started really quite poorly. And since then, they've just been slowly chugging away in the background and gaining momentum to the point now where they come to play us and they're sitting in second position and we are up against it potentially and we are severely up against it after 12 minutes because they've taken a lead just as I'm talking about the fact that they've got this momentum behind them. They've been on an absolute tear recently but fortunately for us it got t um, taken away. The goal was disallowed which is really fantastic for us because they did kind of carve us open just a little bit but uh, so far, so good. Let's just click in and see what they're up to rather than what we're up to in terms of our statistics, etc. on this particular page. Now you can see that they've got quite a defensive structure. We've seen this a couple of times in, in the Welsh league that we're in and it's held out so far, um, but it's been quite an even game. Other than one highlight at the beginning on the 12th minute where they had a goal disallowed, we haven't really seen much else. Five shots at goal for us, three on target, four on one for them. XG ratings are awful from both. Uh, possession is in their favour just a little bit. Um, and ultimately, we get through to half time and we're at nil-nil. It's not a terrible result if we can get a draw out of it, really, and keep our three-point advantage because I think we're reasonably strong uh, against like 90% of the rest of the league, really. So it is just about keeping them behind us as much as we can. So if that means a draw today, that's what we'll take. But ultimately, we'll see what we can do in the second half, just to nab a, um, a, go a goal somewhere. So let's go with uh, hands on hips. Uh, we've been the better team. Just keep doing your, what you're doing. You'll be fine. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one. Uh, you've been unlucky so far. Let's go with that one. It just uh, talks a little bit about the fact we've had a few more shots at goal than they've had. Um, and we haven't quite found a route through, but it doesn't mean that we can't. Let's see if we can keep that up in the second half. Let's go into the shouts and just demand more from them fairly early in this second half. See if we can get a performance out of them in this second half. Um, we've got an issue for Grogan at the back. If we pause the game and go into the tactics uh, page, you'll see that he's picked up a knock. Uh, he's got a potential hand issue, so it's not really bad, but he is hampered by it, unfortunately. We've also got a, a second um, defender who's got a yellow card as well. So central defensive-wise, we're in a, in a bit of a bind at the moment. Do I take off my really well, big, performing, is slightly injured player, or do I take off the yellow card, or do I leave them? I think for now I'm going to leave them and just see what happens in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes of the game, especially to Grogan, the uh, slightly injured player, whether he can sustain his fitness all the way through or not. <clears throat> but it really doesn't help, does it, in such a huge game to be sort of have your hands tied just a little bit by those kinds of things creeping into the side. And here we go again with a Kevin Druids um, highlight down this left-hand side. We do get a foot in briefly, but we boot it clear with that foot. 
and it gives it straight back to them and they continue to build up this time from the back more centrally uh, going through the lines uh, and out wide left again can we get another block on the cross this time we can't and it goes into the near post and you could see it the, the again the the striker runs off of the defender gets himself in front of the defender in terms of where the ball is coming from and just sticks out a leg and hooks it towards goal very nicely. And the goalkeeper can't really do much about it. I thought he was going near post. He didn't. He went far post. And again, it's the quickness of thought from the defenders, which is a little bit of an issue. And it doesn't help when they're in uh, it's slightly injured and also got a yellow card against their name. Again, it's a Kevin Druid's um, highlight of oh, that. That is really kind of unfortunate in a lot of ways. Coughlin, our goalkeeper, has been all right and then messed it up a little bit. But I feel it might be offside. We might be lucky for the second time in the game. And we are. It gets chalked off. We're going to have to make a couple of changes now, I feel. We're just The momentum of the game has, has clearly shifted in their favour. Um, you can see that Grogan continues to suffer with his conditioning now. I feel like we're going to have to take him off. I need the fresh legs at the back, really. Uh, so we'll put the new guy, Gareth Davies, in instead. I'd love to have been able to take Gill out because he's underperforming on the yellow card. But that injury really changes it, unfortunately. Jay Woodford, our Metzala, not having a good day in midfield today. But then neither <laughs> of the strikers are either. I think I'm going to take both of those out. Ruben Davies, who's an absolute superstar for us this season, having his, one of his worst days when it really, really matters. But anyway, there we go. We'll bring Thompson in for him. We'll bring the new guy Spruce in for Howell. Uh, we'll set that going. I don't want him as a target forward. I want him as a poacher. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's what we're going to do there. <coughs> Excuse me. And the likes of Woodford is just going to have to pull his socks up, basically, and get better. Um, and because we're now uh, behind in the game, I feel like we might as well give it a good go. It's, it doesn't matter whether we lose by one or two, does it, really? We've still lost and lost the points. So we're going to go into our attacking setup, uh, uh, into the version of that within our three tactics that we've been training, and see if we can just push the point a little bit for the last 20 minutes of the game. Um, and catch them unawares a little bit. Spruce, the new guy, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and immediately makes a huge impact. He's played once, maybe twice for us in the last couple of games. Not looked particularly good, to be honest, um, but it was very early days. But then, this is the team. Was it him, I think, that was coming up against one of his um, former teams? Did we get him from Kevin Druids? I think we possibly did. And if that's the case, again, it's an old boy going back to haunt their previous team. Uh, we've seen it against us many, many times. It's always fantastic when you can see it happen for us in our favour. Uh, can we get another one? Summers with the cross in from the corner kick gets partially cleared, but he's going to pick up the loose ball again for us and reset us down this right hand side. Puts an early ball in, probably too early. Could have run at the defender out wide for a little bit. Uh, and try and commit a few players. And it meant that Kevin Drewers can get a counter-attack going. We're still on the attacking mentality because the momentum shifted in our favour. Uh, but maybe at this point it's worth potentially just changing that. And now we're in trouble. Now we're in trouble because <laughs> a second yellow card for our right-sided winger, Jake Summers, means that we're down to 10 men. So we're immediately going to go into the defensive setup. And we're going to change this up slightly. Gammond, uh, who can play left wing back, full back, all sorts of other bits and pieces, but is very much a left sided player. I'm going to ask him to play more centrally. We are going to put him uh, in there and switch him with Scott. And we are going to ask him to play as another Metzala. So they're going to work the slightly wide areas both Woodford and Gammond. And we're going to get Scott in here in a much more ball-winning capacity. See if we can hold out for the last few minutes of the game. What have we got? We've got eight minutes to play. We're in our defensive mentality now. We've got two up top as a, a, a release ball, let's say. Let's see if we can use that. Um, 
it's just such a shame, isn't it, that uh, we got a player sent off with so little time left on the clock. Well, I say little time for for, for them, potentially. It's going to feel like an age for us, uh, possibly. Time is ticking, though. We're up to 86 minutes, so we've got four minutes plus injury time. Again, it's Kevin Druids on the ball with a highlight, which does not bode well for us. And Coughlin comes out, sorts that one out for us, which is good. He's now on the ball. Please clear it well. Uh, you can feel something brewing here. Uh, and he gives it straight back to them. Unfortunately, there was nobody underneath that uh, particular goal clearance good enough to make it work for us. And they've completely, completely sucker punched us, I feel. I think we were doing okay, but that goal clearance just gave it straight back to them. And they very quickly went over the top of our defence into Friday down the right-hand side. He crosses the ball in. We get a good enough clearance, but it falls to their uh, attacking player from midfield. And he lashes the ball, and it goes into that bottom right-hand corner. And with two minutes to play, we are going to lose this game, unfortunately. We've got a minute of added time, and I think we're done. We are... It's a, it's a really challenging game to, to analyse in a lot of ways. I think we did okay. I think we had the chances at goal. I think we uh, came back into the possession stats in the second half. Our XG rating was better than theirs. But we had a player sent off with eight minutes to go. And it completely changed that last sort of eight minutes of the match. And it gave them the freedom to be able to find a route through to goal again, which they then took. We had some good performances out there. It's a shame that we had to take Grogan out. I don't think I was wrong in doing that. I feel like if I'd have kept him on all the way through, he'd have been out for ages afterwards, potentially. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of gutting, really. Um, we've got maybe just the, the glimmer of hope that we're still on top, I think, through a goal difference, aren't we? One goal difference, maybe, because they've only taken one back on us. But they did take the three points, and we are now even at the top of the table. This is going to be a real shootout for the rest of the season. We can't afford to mess up too much with them uh, really, really bearing down on us. Today, I feel like we were a little bit unlucky. But unlucky is the same as anything else, isn't it? When ultimately, you lose the game. So, a couple of things to go through before we figure out what we're going to be doing for next episode. First off is this page here. Colwyn Bay lose after 16 games undefeated. We were on such a good streak of form in the league specifically. And unfortunately, they've just ended that one with a 2-1 win over us, Kevin Druids. But 16 matches shows how dominant we are in the rest of the, the division. The, the real key thing for us now is can we get back to that form really quickly? Can we find a way to go and dominate the rest of this league as we have done so far this season and get back to winning ways and put the pressure on Kevin Druids? The reason we need to now pressure them is that they have taken top spot from us. Um, <clears throat> and it is potentially only alphabetically at the moment because uh, my mistake, it was only a one goal swing that was needed. So we are now both on 51 points, having played 21. Goal difference is both 30 plus 30. So you can see that the, the, it's all very, very tight. The interesting thing, of course, is we've now lost twice this season, but only drawn three times. They have not lost a game so far in 21 matches, but they drew a bunch at the beginning of the season. They've drawn six. So that's where the discrepancy is. And ultimately, it means that they sit top of the table just, just by the barest of margins. Can we turn that around for the rest of the season? We're going to have to find out. So let's go into the schedule. Let's check out what's coming up. Um, so we've now played both of our matches against Kevin Druids. We played them fairly early on in the season and lost 4-2 to them at that point before going on this magnificent run. So ultimately, we haven't got them to play anymore. Can we go pretty much undefeated for the rest of the season? I mean, we've done pretty much that so far this season. A couple of draws in there. 
uh, and that loss, uh, those two losses to Kevin Druids. Can we find a way to get back to it? Buckley up next, then Corwin. Uh, the big key game that's coming up fairly soon that we'll be coming for next episode is this one against Ruthen. And Ruthen are a big game for us because they're sitting in the top four. And for a while, they were sitting above us in the league in top spot. So they're going to be a tricky fixture. Probably the trickiest that we've got left to play, maybe. So we're going to come back for that next episode, play Ruthen. And then the following episode, just to finish everything off for this season, we play Prestatin away from home on the final day of the season. So those are the next two episodes. We're going to have to see whether we can find a way to keep ahead of Kevin Druids in some form or other. This is why this division is so difficult and why it was um, so apparent that Colwyn uh, Bay had finished second for the last three seasons in a row before I took charge. It's because there's only one promotion spot and Kevin Druids are now sitting in it. Let's see what we can do. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Really kind of disappointing in uh, the way the game panned out. I'm not too disappointed by the performance in a lot of ways. I think we were genuinely quite unlucky. But ultimately, if you get a player sent off, if you get a couple of um, yellow cards and an injury along the way, it changes the way you have to set up. And that's what happened to us today. And we succumbed and we didn't get the points. Anyway, that's done for now. We have to move forward. Let's see what we can do. Thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That'll help me get seen by more people. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.